Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios and brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We're here with an amazing gentleman who began his entertainment career at three years old in Britain's um you you get paid uh, circus clown and also um the author of over 30 books, including Millionaire Plan, Passive Hypnosis Pro. Profits and also his new book, uh, Shitnosis. We'll talk about that. And he's also a celebrity hypnotist, um, master um, NCP uh, hypnosis trainer, and also um, presenter of the Mind Control uh, Expose documentary. We'll talk about that. And uh, had several near death experiences and um, battles various addictions and how you can overcome it. He'll show you how as well, too. And, um, you know, just a lot of great things. And uh, he'll put on a magic show for you. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios, uh, somewhere on the other side of the pond. He's got a new book, Shiknosis, and also uh, talk about his amazing entertainment career and more. Ladies and gentlemen, the multi-talented Jonathan Royale. Jonathan, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? We're doing great. We're calling yourself the Magical Guru, and uh, we'll find out why. So you've got a new book out called Shiknosis. We encourage you to uh, show that up. Yeah, that's Indeed. it right there. So we'll talk about that. Yeah, and uh, you also had Millionaire Plan, Passive Hypnosis Profits. You began a career at three years old in Britain's um, you, you youngest paid uh, circus clown and also author of 30 books, celebrity uh, hypno, hypnotherapist and more. Before getting all that, uh, Jonathan, tell us how I first got started. Uh, well, it wasn't really a matter of choice because it's one of those things that I just, to, to me, what seemed normal was all to the outside. But, you know, it's all about perspective. I was born uh, while my parents were traveling with Gandhi Circus here in England. So uh, as is the way on the circus, uh, people are encouraged to get started performing uh, as early as possible. And consequently, by the time November 1978 came along, do some math, you can work out how old I am now. Um, but by the time November 1978 came along, I was appearing in the ring and on stage with my dad, who was performing as Tizzy the Clown. And I therefore became uh, Flat the Clown uh, mm -hmm. at the time, Britain's and probably, well, Britain's and Europe's and probably at the time the world's youngest paid circus clown. But that title's definitely been... Um, taken since uh that i do know um so that set the snowball rolling as it were to to me growing up performing two shows a day six days a week and moving town to town to different schools and stuff was what seemed to me normal but normal doesn't exist does it it's just a <laughs> psychological construct as it were um, but my mum, who didn't come from a show business background, her construct of normal was that you don't go to a different school every week. So she insisted and got her way, as it were, by the time I was six and a bit, that we get a house somewhere. And my dad would carry on travelling with the circus, but I would only perform at weekends after school or in school holidays when the shows were nearby so that I could apparently have the normal going to the same school all the time experience, which in one regard, I suppose, in th well, she did mean the best. Unfortunately, because I was always appearing in the national media in England, and especially when I started that normal schooling, as it were, I was featured in a paper called the uh, Daily Mirror here in England, and they ran an article, Alex, because that's my birth name, Alex the Circus Six It. And when that appeared, it led to the teachers, and yeah, I did say the teachers before I finished this sentence, to the teachers starting to, there's no other way of putting it, persecuting and bullying me, and looking back on it, I can only rationalize it as um demonstrating their jealousy for whatever perception they had of the fact that i was earning um well certainly for a six and a bit year old uh bizarrely large amounts of money and they made my life a living hell so much so that i begged to, to change schools but there wasn't another school in that village and it took until i was nearly eight and a bit so well going on close to two years before my mum was able to arrange for us to move to another town and get another house and me go to a different school 
where I'm delighted to say, teachers, fantastic. No issues whatsoever. <laughs> it was like, yay, yay, I've escaped it all. <laughs> Unfortunately, I still can't, well, I say unfortunately, everything has a good and a bad side. Um, I kept appearing in the media. And as I did, in fairness, didn't get any grief off the teachers. In fact, the teachers were very supportive and encouraging of the performing side of things. But many of the other students, pupils at the school, started to bully me on a regular basis. Now, some of that was to do with the um, performing and appearing in the media. Some of it was, it's not obvious because I keep my hair real short in the areas where it's not naturally thinning. Um, um, but I do naturally have ginger hair. So, you know, the that's a, another wonderful target for bullying. So I'll combine that all in and life, frankly, became something of a living hell. And it had a negative effect getting this daily verbal abuse and multiple times a week physical violence at school um it, it just it had a negative impact on um, my self-esteem self-confidence self-image um and all those things sense of identity ended up you know not feeling worthy the little voice saying oh you're not good enough Although when I was on stage performing and the audience were clapping and showing their appreciation, that felt wonderful, fantastic. It was a total escape from from all the negativity. Mm -hmm. I guess I was around 12, so the, it was the transitional period where uh, in England we moved from uh, primary school to high um, secondary school. Well, I think what they call high school in the States, possibly. Um, and I'd had enough, frankly. And one day in wintertime or fall, um, as they call it in the States, when it goes darker earlier in the day, I, I, I thought, you know what? It occurred to me if I lay down in the middle of Queen's Park Road in Haywood, which is the busiest main road, that no one had seen me because it was dark and everything would be over incredibly quickly. So I did lay down in the road. And after what seemed like forever, well, I mean, time's relative, you know, you can, you, you, it's also a perceptional thing. You can bump into somebody you've not seen for years, be talking to them, look at your watch and then suddenly realise what felt like five minutes you've been talking to them for several hours. Or conversely, you can go in for like a job appraisal where you're dead stressed going seeing the boss, be sat there, leave the office thinking you've been in there for half an hour or longer, look at your watch and you've been in there less than five minutes. So mm. time e e is elastic. It seemed like forever, but it was probably only 30 seconds a minute. But it got to the point where no traffic had come and I kind of got fed up and I thought, bloody hell, you can't even kill yourself properly. So I stood up and started making my way back to the sidewalk. And the moment I put my foot on the um, sidewalk pavement for those people in England, I suddenly heard this, Whoop! and I felt this massive draft. And I turned my head and saw this massive articulated lorry truck, followed by cars, followed by more trucks, followed by cars. And the road was exactly how I always knew it to be, the busiest road in um, the town. And in that moment, I both shit myself which is kind of the inspiration part of the title, but there's more, obviously there's more to it as well. Um, and in that moment, thought there's got to be a better way of dealing with this. Mm -hmm. And in later, you know, in later years, I read about people who who tried committing suicide by jumping out of multi-story buildings, and a surprising number of them survived. And all of them that had survived consistently say that what led them to jump out of the building was they felt that they had too many things to deal with and they just couldn't deal with it anymore. They had too many problems. Uh, but that when they jumped out of the building and they started hurling towards the ground, they realised actually they only had one problem. And that one problem was that they just jumped out of a building and were hurling towards the ground. And it was kind of reframes everything makes you look at things differently and that was although i didn't jump out of the building that 
was my moment of madness that turned into sort of clarity of there's got to be a different way of of doing this. And it started my quest to find a solution to stop feeling the way that I did. And ideally, also to stop the verbal bullying and physical um, bullying from taking place at school, which did over the next couple of years i i i discovered books on psychology and in particular a book by uh a no longer with us french psychologist called emile coué um who's best known for the personal self-affirmation of day by day in every way i'm feeling better and better mm-hmm. and his book said that if you if you if you kind of said that to yourself a dozen a minimum of a dozen times First thing in the morning when you opened your eyes, but you're not yet fully awake, which is what's called the hypnopompic state. Mm -hmm. And last thing at night, when you start yawning, just before, when you close your eyes, but just before you drift off to sleep, that's called the hypnogogic state. And what those fancy psychology words basically mean is it's that time of the day where the critical faculty, analytical area, executive function, call it what you will, of your brain, or as I like to think of it like a nightclub bouncer that stops negative shit getting into your personal laptop computer uh, or stops it being messed around with, um, goes for its coffee break. So it's the time when you can actually sneak in to the personal laptop computer, your unconscious subconscious mind, and delete negative programs install positive mental antivirus software for the brain and and reprogram yourself to, to, to head in the right direction. So I started using the techniques in that book and it definitely did make it easier to put up with the abuse uh, and have more resilience and to help increase self-worth even though it's been attacked all the time but obviously i was still searching for a way to stop it from happening Mm -hmm. and then i learned about um a couple of other psychological techniques one called the law of reversed effort which in modern day neuro-linguistic programming we refer to as uh what resists persists or the idea that you get more of what you focus on in life um that's kind of like one example is that say you buy a new red car of a certain brand and you've not seen many of them, but then you've got one, you're dead happy about it because your mind's focused on the fact you've got this brand new red car and you feel really good about it. The reticular activating system of your brain starts to notice red cars, but not just red cars, that particular model of red car popping up everywhere have they suddenly appeared from nowhere no it's just that your brain wasn't focused on it before Mm. and you get more of what you focus on in life so if you're focused on the idea of oh i hope i don't get into negative situations i hope i don't get attacked it's actually more likely to happen because you're throwing out negative body language and what no that's a very simplistic explanation and then combined with that is what I call the Yoda principle, which is if you watch Star Wars, Yoda is approached by Luke Skywalker in his training and Yoda famously says, do or do not, there is no try. And the reasoning behind that is that the moment you say to yourself, I'm going to try my best at this or I'm going to try and do this, by using the word try, you're suggesting the possibility of failure. Hmm. Better to say, I am going to do my best. Mm -hmm. Remove the word try. Um, Because that plants a seed of potential negativity that's more likely to grow. And also you'll see stage hypnotist. It's something that stage hypnotists use where they get people to put their hands together and you say, squeeze them together tightly. Imagine they're locking, gluing, welding, cementing, bolting together. Now try to separate your hands. And the reason they say try is because it implies you may not be able to, and it makes it more likely with the other suggestions they've given that they'll lock and glue together and become more difficult than normal to separate until finally people can, but they go, wow, that's harder than normal. And then the final piece of the puzzle, these things I had linked together, and that's what really started the journey to this book, was a thing called pattern interrupts. Now, this is the way human brains work. 
when we experience a new thing, we make a, a, a record of it in our necktop computer, our memory banks. So that next time we encounter a similar thing, we pattern match it quickly. The computer searches and go, yes, we've encountered something like this before. This is what's likely to happen. This is what you're likely to expect. This mm. is the best way to react. And that's how people, if somebody walks up to you and puts their hand out like that, what's the natural thing to do in most cultures? Put your hand out, shake hands. Well, I now dead, but famous hypnotherapist Milton Erickson um, regularly used what he called pattern interrupts. So he would put his hand out towards his hypnotherapy client and the hypnotherapy client would go to shake it because that's what their pattern in their mind told them as natural to do. But instead of connecting hands and shaking their hands, Milton would grab hold of their wrist instead, pull their hands towards their face and say, as you stare at your hand coming towards your face, it's just a sign and a signal for your eyes to close down and you start relaxing more. And and, and this person who was expecting their hand to be shook would suddenly like their eyes would glaze over and they'd be, the brain would be going, what the F's happening here? Oh, wow. Um I have no pattern in my brain to match this to. This is weird. It doesn't make sense. And then he's doing all this hand towards the face and talking to them. So it causes sensory overload, disorientation and confusion, which bypasses the critical faculty, analytical area, executive function, call it what you will, enabling access to the personal laptop computer to reprogram it or hypnotize somebody, uh, as some may call it. Hmm. So I blended these together and I thought, you know what? I've nothing to lose. I'm going to get hit tomorrow anyway at school if this doesn't work. So I'll try it. And the mm. next day at high school, as the bully approached me and went, as they normally did to pin me against the wall when they then give me some verbal nonsense before hitting me and walking off with their entourage following and laughing, as a hand came towards me, I immediately went, why don't you effing stop wasting time and stop effing talking BS? And why don't you just hit me now then, you more on go and try try it do it try and hit me now and that blended together all these things i've just spoke about and lo and behold much to my surprise i have to say at the time suddenly this like glazed look went over the eyes and i thought oh it did uh, work. it's is that confusion and disorientation <laughs> so i started saying it more i went go and try 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 or why don't you Oh, either do it or F off. go and try and hit me now. And it just, they got Margaret and I thought, this is working. And then suddenly they walked away from me, turned to their entourage and said, come on, fellas. Then looked at me and went, don't effing come near me ever again. Well, I had no intention to do it. <laughs> it's, it's like, well, why key, would you? <laughs> yeah, no. But the key thing is they never came near me. And that was the day that I learned that words used correctly with psychology can be life-changing, not just wounding. And that's when I really took a deep dive into learning neurolinguistic programming, uh, hypnotherapy, positive mind program techniques, loads of different names for what is ultimately just ways of communicating with that personal laptop computer hmm. to cut any negative um, emotions, energies, Self blame, shame, guilt, and regret being let go of, frustration, anger, fear being let go of to enable and empower people to fill them with a full sense of pride and self confidence and self image and self esteem and self love. Self respect is really important so they can feel whole, so they can have a self identity that's positive and a little voice in the head that we all have. But too many people who, for example, talk about imposter syndrome, that little voice is going, You're not good enough. Whereas there are techniques that you can get it so that little voice says, hey, you're doing really well. Hmm. Keep at it. I was, just gonna, I was gonna ask you something as well too. I've been in some seminars mm -hmm. as well too. They focus like, you know, focus on this color, focus on the object and everything else. And someone also said, it's also programming your uh, alpha waves, beta waves, and also the theta as well too. Try to control that. Have you studied the, the waves of those um, principles like the alpha, beta, and the uh, theta as well? Well, the correct order is beta, alpha, theta, delta. Uh, and the easy way to remember it is it's about, it's B A T D. So B A T is bat, and D is the first letter of dung. So I just remember the order is bat shit, bat dung, B A T D. <laughs> okay, beta is basically when you're fully conscious. It's it's that's essentially it. 
Alpha is the letter A, so A is for like air. And the way to remember this is like having your head in the clouds, daydreaming. Well, that's what alpha is. It's like a daydreamy state. Uh, theta is the letter T. T is also the first letter of trance. Um, so it is more, it's theta is, is effectively is what trance is. Although trance as such doesn't exist in the way a lot of people say, but it is that brainwave pattern that is the one where it's easiest to reprogram the person on ectop computer. And then delta is the letter D. D is also the first letter of dreaming, as in <laughs> the snorry sleep at night. Those are what the different brainwave patterns are and how to remember them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something I've definitely looked into because it is it is interrelated with um, well, it's interrelated with stuff that's taught in shit gnosis. You know, it's rather interesting. We'll talk about that, too, and also along the lines of Delta and everything else and um, how these waves, how the hypnosis and everything can also overcome certain things with um, with Jonathan Royal. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sockweb Studios. Visit online at sockwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention to Mike Widener's show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia molson -Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia molson -Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love be the first skill missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia molson -Zia has got great reviews. And Eve 11 endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and Manilis. So grab your copy today for Goals Missing by Mia molson -Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com or 40 podcast platforms heard in 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Music, as well as um, Geo7, Radio Public, and also on BitChute, Rumble, and also YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to those channels. Also, take us with you on any mobile device. Make sure you subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble. Follow us on Instagram. Twitter, TikTok today, as well as LinkedIn. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Muslim DM for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash me and Muslim DM. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the amazing, multi-talented uh, author and um, hypnotherapist, uh, Jonathan Royal, here on the Mike Wagner Show. And um, you've been doing this for quite some time as well, too. And, um, you know, so before we get to the book, um, Shit, Shit Gnosis as well, too, you also did Millionaire Plan, Passive uh, hip Hypnosis Profits, and 30 other books. Uh, tell us about a couple of books as well, too, and uh, how you got started. And if there's some other books you'd love to talk about, feel free to do so. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of it. People go on Amazon and just type in Jonathan Royal, and that's R O Y L E. Um, they'll find them. Um, the, the the without a doubt, which will come to shortly, this is the one that I am proudest of, and is more truthful to people. Well, certainly in terms of wide issues in their lives. However, yeah, I mean, there's other ones out there that are aimed at helping people become a diploma bearing clinical hypnotherapist. If that was something they wanted to do, there's books out there based on my experience over the years performing as a magician and mind reader with various things I've created and we, we, we can try and experiment in a minute if you if you'd like sure. um and yeah I mean you mentioned passive hypnosis profits and the millionaire plan they're things that people can find uh, on my website magicalguru.com they're not just a book they're actually also video training programs as well showing people how I was able to uh, effectively retire and buy my own home outright for cash, no mortgages or loans or borrowing of any kind. I literally went in like the arrogant idiot I was uh, when I was a youngster, just before I turned 30 and uh, went, I want to buy that house, opened a briefcase and everyone in the building kind of shit themselves and <laughs> security and asked for the building to be cleared while they locked up to count the money. Um 
But yeah, the training programs on how I created multiple streams of passive income so that um, essentially I became able to go to sleep at night and wake up in the morning, having often earned more than many people do while they're awake. Because obviously once you've written a book, for example, that's only one example, but once you've written a book, it's out there and that could potentially be selling every day for the rest of your life. But one book alone might not sell enough to pay all your bills. Uh, but you end up with like a dozen books and various video programs and other stuff. And I mean, now I have I've got over 200 odd different video training programs out. It's actually over 50 different books now. Um, although, to be honest, you know, most of those books are completely irrelevant to pretty much any viewer or listener, unless you're already a clinical hypnotherapist or you want to become a clinical hypnotherapist. If you are just a human being with no desire to get into it as a career, uh, you're just a human being who perhaps got some form of habit, fear, addiction, phobia, uh, maybe suffers from anxiety or panic attacks, depression, chronic pain, or a whole bunch of things you could think of from A through to Z, then there is only one book that's relevant out of all the ones I've released, and that is the most recent. Shit Gnosis, helping you get over the shit in your life and get your shit together. Mm. Um, but before we come back to that, before we came on air, I took this deck of cards. And what I did is I took them out, and I was thinking, I was looking at a picture online. I'll look at Mike there. I'm getting an energy. I think he'll go for that card. And I took one card. I took it out. I turned it around in the deck and I popped it back in. So I'm telling you now, there is one card the wrong way around in this deck. I'm also going to tell you something else. It is not, it is not the Ace of Spades. And it is not the King of Clubs. And the reason I tell you that is because they're two of the most commonly chosen cards. So definitely it is not either of them. I can also tell you it is not the Queen of Hearts, which is the third most commonly chosen card. So... Now that I've given you a clue of which three it's not, what is the first playing card that enters your head? Say it now. Seven of diamonds. The seven of diamonds. And we didn't set anything up in advance, did we, Mike? No, just for the sake of the viewers and listeners. Because I think, oh, for the sake of entertainment, it's been set up. Well, no, I promise you it really hasn't. We, we've literally just got a deck of cards here. And somewhere in here, there is definitely a card the wrong way around. But well, for some reason, we're having trouble finding the bloody thing. Ah, there it is. Okay. Only one card that is the wrong way. You got an entirely free choice. And yet, what do you say? The seven of diamonds? Yes. Get ready to be amazed because I predict oh, how you the like seven that? of diamonds. Ooh, um, that was amazing. You know what? Wow. Where's the settings on here? I'm going to take the blur off the background because it kind of, um, it, 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 yeah. Oh, there it stops we the go. Edge, it stops the edges of the cards from being fuzzy, which um, is relevant because um, I'm going to show you uh, something a little bit odd which is what playing cards look like at the factory before they're printed. Because I bought some because I thought I, could, I was going to try and design some playing cards of my own. Um, and I, I bought some of them. And they, you can go on Amazon and type in blank playing cards. And sure enough, what you will get sent is blank playing cards, cards that are blank on both sides. And then you can use them to write words on or draw your own cards or, or whatever. Now, I'll be honest with you, it turned out I'm not very good at drawing, so I gave up on that idea and I ordered some more blank playing cards. I'm trying to make sure that I'm in full view of the camera. And I thought of a playing card and I thought of, fully enough, the Seven of Diamonds, which is what you thought of before. And the Seven oh of Diamonds. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> just appeared. <laughs> However, here's the weird thing. Unfortunately, it didn't have a back, so that was really not much use. Um, so what I did is I thought of a blue geometrical design and then suddenly one appeared and we had a nice blue, ge but it had no face, which again was particularly not very useful. Um, but then they went back to being all blank and I thought, 
what can we do here? And I thought, well, what we're going to do is really, really focus. And if we really, really focus, then maybe the Ten of Hearts will appear. And if the Ten of Hearts appear, maybe also a blue back design will have appeared. And if a blue back design was to appear, I'll try and get in line with the camera. Uh, that's why I took the blur off so people know that I've still got the same deck of cards. Then suddenly we might have a complete, fully printed deck of cards. But obviously that was just a dream. I mean, it, it, that would be weird, wouldn't it? One minute they're um, blank, next minute they're printed. Um, what would be even weirder is if we suddenly cut them like that, and when we did, they just suddenly became completely, utterly. Oh, my blank. goodness. Wow. Again. <laughs> stretch, <Ooh>. stretch. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is one of the best magic tricks I've seen in a while. <laughs> it's so amazing. <laughs> wow. Excuse me. Sorry. I've got a little bit of a tickly throat. Oh, that's perfectly okay. And of course, you know, you've um, done some magic for quite some time. Who are some of your favorite magicians and entertainers growing up? I forgot to ask you that earlier. Um, without a doubt, uh, from an American perspective, um, I use, I, Growing up, I love watching um, David Copperfield's television specials, Vanishing the Statue of Liberty, Walking Through the Great Wall of China, um, and stuff like that. Um, from an English perspective, some Americans may have heard of him, not so much maybe, but um, a great television magician before he died was a guy called Paul Daniels, who I was lucky enough to uh, actually work with when I was very young. Um, and then world famous, uh, and now he wouldn't necessarily call himself a magician, but many people would. Um, it's a guy who this year, it's 50 years since he first burst onto the television screens worldwide. And that's the world famous, he would call himself, uh, world famous psychic mystifier and spoonbender, Uri Geller. Um, find him very inspirational could just i mean for 50 years he's, he's had more books written about him than any magician well, sorry he's not a magician he's not a magician well he says he isn't um mm -hmm. but let's imagine he was a magician he's had more books written about him than any other magician other than probably harry udini um so yeah i mean his ability to get publicity in the media and uh, even to this day, he's regularly appearing in the media. Uri Geller is definitely one of those inspirations as well. I still wonder how he managed to bend the spoons. I can wonder about that. How has he managed to bend the spoons? <laughs> Bear with me. Um, I've got... I wasn't planning on doing this. That's why they were in the drawer. But as for some reason, we've got onto that subject. Um I do keep on standby some spoons. Now, if you were here and I could hand these to you, I willingly would do. Unfortunately, I can't. The best I can do is give them a right good old solid black. So you can tell that we've got... And in fact, you know what? I'll get rid of a couple. That leaves me with... I'll hold one in the air. So we'll call that the A. The one that's at top is A and the one that's at the bottom is B. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to say A or B. Whichever one you name is the one I will keep hold of. The one that you do not name, I will put down, whichever it may be. So A is in the air, B is here. Which one do you want me to keep hold of? A. Okay, so we'll get rid of B. Again, it was an entirely free choice, yeah? So what I'd like you to do, everyone, is think of the colour... Orange. Now, orange is a mixture of red and yellow. Uh, so it's a really powerful. It's one of the most powerful colours because it's got the energies of both red and yellow in there. And it's also symbolic of like the sun beaming down its energy and its heat. And that's the idea that if you just concentrate and imagine the colour uh, orange and you look mm -hmm. at the screen, what Uri would do is he'd just be rubbing gently like that and he'd rub it. And as he did, it would start to look as though it started to, might be able to notice that starting to bend. It's actually, truly, if I bring it closer, you'll see that that is actually starting to bend more 
And it truly it is starting to bend more and more and more. And here's the thing, it's actually now starting to feel a little bit plasticky so that with one finger, just one finger, it almost looks as though it's starting to get plastically, like it's starting to kind of wiggle, like it's starting to, um, I don't know, starting to melt. It's weird. It's um, Sometimes Uri would hold it and just shake it and say, concentrate here, and then, oh! <laughs> and then... Bizarrely, it snaps. Whoa! All with a color orange. I like that. Oh, my goodness. Woo! <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's bizarre. I mean, I, I don't know. It's weird. Um, yeah, the power of the mind. Yes, the power of the mind indeed. And also, you, you had in the book as well, too, also overcome a number, number of addictions, too. You know, like, say, with... um. Alcohol addiction, tobacco, sex, and cocaine, and just about everything like that. And uh, maybe just a bit about um, how you can use the mind, you know, to get rid of these addictions. And maybe like even the toughest one, which, which would that be? What What's the toughest addiction you would uh, overcome? There's no such thing as a toughest addiction. Um, that's, that's implying that you give labels to things. You, you're either addicted to something or you're not. And if you are then it's because there's an imbalance somewhere, a lacking, a hole that feels like it needs filling. And some people leap too much to try and bury the problem. Some people drink to try and drown them out. Some people smoke to try and put a metaphorical smoke screen. Other people take drugs in whatever form to literally try and escape the feelings uh, uh, and such like. And yeah, when I was on my quest, before I fully managed to go through the processes that I teach in, shit gnosis and actually do personal self-healing both of myself as an adult and also of the inner metaphorical inner child before i'd done all that there was a period in my mid to late well before i was 20 anyway um when yeah abuse of alcohol cocaine gambling a whole myriad of things anything that would distract from um those traumas and pains that I was walking around with and all those, that psychological bag baggage and feelings of self-blame, shame, guilt, regret, fear, anger, res remorse, resentment, things that I'm sure many viewers and listeners can relate to. Um, my escape was a bit of all of them. And I wouldn't say one was any harder than the other. Um, you know, whereas I had numerous uh, escapes and it varied intensity on which one. Some people are fully focused on one, you know, they don't drink and they don't smoke, but they do take a drug of choice, whatever that may be. Or others just drink way too much, but don't do any of the other. Ultimately, it comes down to there having been traumas of some kind from birth, some time up to and including around the teenage years, puberty. Um, when then the kind of, that's when the critical faculty analytical area starts its job. Prior to the age of kind of teenage years, there isn't really a critical faculty as such, not working in the same way. So all stuff, good, bad or indifferent, goes into the personal laptop computer. And it can get blown out of proportion. Because when it goes in, it gets stored at the emotional intensity it was when it happened. Okay. And it affects us then or with the emotional intensity of as it happened at the time, rather than as if we looked at it as an adult now. And what I mean by that, the example of that is, Imagine this. As an adult, if I said to you that the idea of a three-year-old at a birthday party grabbing a balloon, thinking in that moment it's the most wonderful thing in the world, being really happy, and then suddenly the balloon gets popped and they start crying and they're traumatised by it, really upset, five, ten minutes or whatever, before they find another balloon or whatever, that that experience to them because they're not an adult, that experience to them with their young imaginations, because to them it may not just have been a red balloon, it could have been a spaceship, it mm -hmm. could have been anything that's just blown up 
Um, the point is, the emotional intensity to them is traumatic. It's as traumatic to that young three-year-old mind as it would be to us as an adult, I'm 48 this year, losing a loved one, a friend or a family member. There is a grieving thing that would ideally take place, but they're at that age, they're that young, that something else then distracts them and they never get a chance to go through the getting over it process so it gets kind of frozen in time as a traumatic memory that goes into that computer um they're what i refer to as mini traumas but we have loads of them growing up and everyone compounds the other and they go into the personal laptop computer and mean that when the security guard does start his job when we're about you know teenage and the critical faculty analytical area starts working that stuff's already in there so unless some purposeful ritualistic process, also known as therapy, whether it's done through a therapist or more preferably yourself in the privacy of your own home, is to undertaken to be able to distract the doorman of the mind, to get into the control room, to your personal laptop computer, to delete the negative files that have been in there, to release those frozen in time traumas so that the inner child can metaphorically be healed and you can effectively grow up properly so that you're not just consciously an adult, you become unconsciously, subconsciously an adult as well and become in harmony. Until that's done, there's always going to be things running that, that are causing you problems. And that is what can be the underlying imbalances that causes the need for drugs, addictions, or it can be the, th the thing that causes the traumatic um, anchors that can cause you know, panic attacks, anxiety, depression, phobias, and a whole bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. you, you talked about the smoking as well, too, being like a smoke screen, you know, just like a cover up of um, uh, problems, alcohol, just this escape, you know, from like, you know, you know, you know, like uh, what's going on in life and everything. What about gambling? Uh, what, what would that like, you know, mirror as? It, 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 it's, 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 it's wanting all, all of them. I mean, it's a bit more obvious for gambling. You know, when people chasing after the losses, it's about them wanting to try and regain control of the situation. It's that idea that they will be able to regain control or hope they can regain control of the situation. And obviously that when they do win, it's such a, an endorphin, an adrenaline rush that feels so good it's actually better than taking massive amounts of cocaine or heroin. The, the, the escape from the contrast from the shit of everyday life to a one is so massively addictive that gambling is actually one of the most addictive ones. If you're going to put them on a, a on a scale, because of the extreme feelings that get associated to uh, winning. But as with all of the things, it. it people end up doing certain things because they feel out of control, but they do them because on some weird, often perverse, illogical level, by doing these things, it gives them a sense of being in control, even mm. though in reality it can sometimes be making things worse. So it's just like you put a coin in the uh, slot machine, you won something, you think you can um, get more and more, or, or like say you um you bet a soccer match, you win or something like, you know, England wins the World Cup and everything like that. You just kind of feel you have that control. It seems to be along those lines. It's like, you know, hey, I got it. It's like, you know, more and more, I tried to build like a quick way of wealth. Yeah, I mean, in, in essence, it is really as simple as that. There's multi different layers to it as well. For each individual, there'll be extra bits because that's why we're individuals. I'm just on about the commonalities b between them. And it's when you look at the commonalities, which is where it makes it possible to put together a book like Shit Gnosis and go, look, these things apply to everyone. Yes, there will be things here that are different, specific, personal to you, but underpinning them, are things that apply to anyone with any habit, addiction, fear, or phobia, or issue. And if you can chip away at those things that are the same for everyone, so that they break down, well, the things that were unique to you in terms of causing more problems to you, they've nothing to be rest upon. So they collapse as well. And as a natural consequence, when they can no longer be supported by the underlying things, the only option is for things to return as 
they once were, where you no longer feel that negativity, where you no longer feel dragged down or where you no longer have that desire for that drug of choice or whatever. Mm, that's really interesting as well, too. We'll um we'll talk more about the book uh Shit Gnosis from um Jonathan Royal as well, too. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the Mike Show.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios, and brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, International Warring Author Mia Molson's Day of Missing, available on Amazon and Paperback and Ebook. We'll be back with author John Ro- Jonathan Royal and uh hypnotherapist of Shit Gnosis after this time. We're back with Jonathan Royal of the book Shit Gnosis here on the Mike Wagner Show, celebrity hypnotherapist and uh, master hypnosis trainer and more. And just a couple of things about uh, shit gnosis as well, too. And um, what, what's like the one one more thing that you like to point about the book and what is like the most important detail about the book that people should really get a hold of? Um, Yeah. Great question. Well, the book, this title kind of sums it up. Shit gnosis, but it's the subtitle that's perhaps more important. Helping you get over the shit in your life and get your shit together. Um, so it's not as flippant as it may first sound because, you know, people do talk about, oh, I wish this shit would be over soon or I've had a shit day or mm-hmm. it, it's a metaphor that people use. So this is written in a way that people can relate to. And it uses the metaphor of the idea that if you've got an issue, a problem, a habit, addiction, fear, phobia or whatever, that in some sense you are emotionally constipated. There is a block blockage somewhere. And you need to use uh, mind laxative, okay, to clear that blockage and gain access to the personal laptop computer to be able to delete the negative programs, install positive mental antivirus software for the brain, which in the book, there's loads of these things, QR codes. Oh, wow. You can just scan and they'll take you directly to online interactive training videos that will talk you through step by step and demonstrate the different self-help exercises that are in the book so that you feel you've got someone there holding your hand, helping you along doing it. Um, so the most important thing isn't so much one technique in here because different techniques are relevant to different people at different times. OK, Um The most important thing of all is to say this. It's no good buying this book, reading it, and expecting it to be a magic wand that will change your life. It could be the magic wand that changes your life, but not by just reading it. You've actually got to put into action the techniques that are inside. And I know that sounds ridiculous, like I'm stating the obvious, but how many multi-millions of pounds of self-help books sell every year? People keep buying more and more and more. They don't need to if they actually put into action what's in the books consistently with focus. Now, some of those books, yeah, it may be because it's it, it's written into arty farty, winky wanky, new age, tree hugging mm-hmm. language. Or for other people, it might be written into scientific, psychological, um, you know, or or, or like the or like the next biggest thing, most popular, and everything like that. Yeah, this I like to think is middle of the road. It's neither massively academic, but also it's neither is it tree huggy. It's written the way the average person on the street would think and speak and relate to. And it calls a spade a spade. And it just shows you what I've used on myself to overcome those things that were holding me back in life. And then more importantly, um, for the whole of my career, it sharing the things that I found work best with my clients, whatever their age, whether male, female, young or old, whether it, whatever their issue be, um, the things are inside this book. And certainly very important as well, too. Very helpful. And where can we find uh, your book set and uh, all your work set, Jonathan? Yeah, cool. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, basically, if you just type in uh, Jonathan Royal, that's uh, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N, Jonathan and Royal is R-O-Y-L-E, into Amazon or any major book retailer for anyone who doesn't want to support Jeffrey Bezos. Um, <laughs> but if you'd like to support me, I do get slightly more royalties through um, Amazon. But it's not an expensive book. It's a reasonably big book. But what the real value of this book is, those QR codes, because there's links to hours of interactive training as well. It's 17 United States dollars, 14 pounds, 70 pence. It's, it's 
to steal to be able to change your life for the better. We will certainly check that out and well worth it as well, too. We're here with author Jonathan Royal of uh, Shit Noses here on the Mike Wagner Show, Celebrity <laughs> Hypnosis, everything else. And uh, also just a couple of things. What else can we expect from you in 2023 and beyond, Jonathan? Um, well, more, more, more of the same. Um, although it is my personal desire and goal to get more involved in what was at one time a career, a career in the sense of a, 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 I earned money from it, and then it became a hobby as the hypnosis took over, and that is to get back into doing more magic shows because that's a, a personal passion of mine. So you know, as the year goes on, I hope to be doing more of that because really it's not that i'm giving up on the hypnosis it's just that in terms of putting something together for the general public to help themselves i genuinely do not believe that i can do any better i couldn't possibly share more i mean this is the result of my 47 and a bit years on this planet of which from the age of 14, I've been helping people with hypnotherapy after becoming the youngest certified hypnotherapist in England. There's anything that I found to be shit, I've not included in the book. The things I found to work have been included. So I can't see me improving on this. So that means that I'll have a lot of free time to fill up with something else. And um, yeah, I, I enjoy doing the magic and the tricks and stuff. Sure. We'll certainly check you out as well, too. Hopefully, will be on the road soon. We'll check you guys out. And uh, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Biggest? Um, in many ways, I'm going to go back and say the name I mentioned earlier, which would be Uri Geller. Massively clever publicist. Balls of steel. <laughs> um, and an exceptional, I'm going to say, magician. Um, he would obviously differ and say psychic phenomenon but um psychic phenomenon or magician whichever it's still uh inspirational both of them take a skill and talent and um yeah he's it, been at the top for the past 50 years or you know, and certainly amazing and, and certainly amazing too indeed very amazing what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point best piece of advice on the planet is the grass is not greener on the other side some of the most psychologically uh, unbalanced people until i worked with them or they worked on themselves using techniques like those that are in this book shit gnosis that i've ever met are people that from the outside you'd look at and go they've got everything they're multi-millionaires they've got the dream home the dream wife and, all. and yet they are some of the biggest um sufferers of anxiety panic depression um imposter syndrome and also fear the fear that they're going to lose it all um the which leads to one final kind of thought and that is the only person you should ever be in competition with is yourself each day have a competition with the previous day's version of yourself to become, even if it's only a teeny weeny weeny <laughs> bit more tolerant or a teeny weeny bit more positive. It doesn't have to be massive because day by day, in every way, I'm getting better and better, as MLQA said. That is a very good point. I like that as well, day by day as well. We're here with author Jonathan Royal of uh, Shipnosis, uh, celebrity uh, hypnotherapist and master hypnotherapist. Hypnosis trainer here on the Mike Wagner Show. Jonathan, very big thank you for your time. That was amazing as well, too. Love your magic as well, too. You are a great magician. Thank you Looking very much indeed. Soon. Yes, yes. And uh, just one more thing. Uh, what's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your books? Oh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I mean, there's one portal for it all to make life easy, and that's magicalguru.co.uk. That's M-A-G-I-C-A-L-G-U-R-U.co.uk. That's got my career resume on, but there's links to my YouTube channels, my social media channels, where you can go and buy books if you so desire, or just generally where you can, there's a whole bunch of free stuff as well. There's a complete virtual interactive hypnotherapy session there that costs nothing that if used as instructed there could help you overcome your habits, addictions, fears, and phobias without even needing to buy the book. <laughs> 
That's a good point. We'll certainly do so. Once again, Jonathan, very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing, entertaining. Thank you. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love have it back. Thank Wish you. all best. And Jonathan, you definitely have a great future ahead of you. Cheers.